everybody. Um, thank you for having me here. Um, I changed slightly the title of this uh, short address. There are two reasons. Um, first, because when I thought, so, you're going there to warm up people, why do you want to talk about something you don't know about? So I, I decided instead to come and so, say a few things about the things that we do the last few years. In that day, I'll say things that I think I can talk more competently. The second thing is that the original thing was about such a reality. Um, I, I shouldn't do this, but Matthew Jones is just, uh, we've been probably, I'm, I'm interested in editing a book uh, from the last year conference on social materiality, and Matthew actually has a fantastic review of what social materiality is. I want to start to see what I have to say from the introduction, so I realized there was something for less interesting. So I said, I call Matthew and he does it, why well, do something else? So, Next year, please invite Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, what I was trying to do is that I've done some success. I visited your place, you know, in, um, in Austin a few months ago, and this seems interesting. Basically, what I'm trying to do, I'm going to try to do is just take about half hour, just to throw it in. Um, some ideas that come from my work. I am a, a, an organizational scholar, I study organizations, and uh, because I'm becoming old, as you know, for instance, I'm becoming old. So, go back to social theory. So, I've been developing, after doing uh, a number of your organizations or a study of growth studies over the last couple of years, I've tried to theorize in the last couple of years, so I'm taking this in an abstract uh, take and see how this can be put in more methodological terms. So, what I thought I'd do here is see, is just share with you some of these things and try to propose to the questions, given that it's Is the practice based across something that can be of interest for us? And it's not for me to to talk. Um, I still have to convince my colleagues that uh, practice space is useful for the study of organizations. So, <laughs> so this is what all I try to do. I just try to, to <coughs> tease you whether this way of studying organized market um, can resonate, and then you decide what to do. I think I. I only say I think about half hour will probably become 40 minutes um, and then obviously sometimes for discussing not with me but about it. Okay. So um, I'm going to organize this things in, in three pieces and I'm going to just outline very briefly what are the promises of looking and organize markets in terms of practices very shortly. And as Jaluka was very kind to say, I've just put these things into a book. Um, the introduction is available also because the Oxford will submit the introductions uh, for free on the website. So I don't think they really should be the So um, I'm saying this because if there is something that, that has a book there, that means it usually doesn't fit that well in 10 minutes. Um, and then just touch. So, if this is the way of, the, of looking at the world, what are the questions? Because I think more than the ontology, you're interested in the methodological issues of what this means for me and for my research. And then I will have very little to say, is this relevant to I guess? Um, because, as I said, this is not for me to say. Um, this is for you to discuss and uh, still um, get inspired or just reject our ideas. So, before proceeding any further, just a few words about this practice bank. Okay, practice bank is a, it's a, it's, a, it's um, a family name for a variety of approaches. It's basically uh, well taken in uh, organization studies because practice base now uh, has been adopted in a variety of fields from marketing to consumption studies. Geography, um, technology, um, anyway, it's a big fashion uh, social theory, of course. So, but it went um, used to address um, organizational matters, so the study of world organizations, which is what organization theory is mostly. It's basically a project. Instead of specifying the study of organizational and social phenomena in terms of 
or networks, assemblages, nexuses, textures, or such material processes. Okay? So the idea is to look at organized um, phenomena, either work or corporate organization, or for the general social market, as assemblages, nexuses, practices tied, knotted together. Okay? So not one practice, many practices, but that's, right. that's the image. Okay? And the core thing here, the, the distinctive um, difference is that uh, this approach tried to bring to the, um, to the study of social matters is that the unit of analysis is not practitioners, but is practices. So the idea is that um, the work is made of practices. Practices is the unit of analysis. Practitioners become, therefore, carriers of practices, and uh, which um, differentiates the practice approach from any other uh, approach like, um, uh, which has the word action. Action approaches include start from a person who acts. Practice-based approaches start from regime of activities, activities, routines, there's a, uh, as I said, it's a family. Uh, there are several uh, approaches inside this which we don't even need to mention. But the idea is that the unit of analysis is already a regime of activities uh, taken uh, as the fundamental uh, uh, building block of social matters. Okay. So, let me just run a little bit more in detail to this so that we understand what we're talking about. So what we're talking about practices, right? we're talking about, um, not you, at least provisionally, about the mediated performance of a nice set of sale and doings when, uh, when such a performance has a history and the social experience. So I suggest that this is, is as good as it gets as a working definitions of practice for starting to look at the world as a conglomerate of practices. Now, um, so when I say that you practice is the unit of analysis, when I suggest that you take practice as the unit of analysis, I'm not thinking as an object. I'm thinking as a recurrent mediated performance. Okay, so the first thing is, is that I'm suggesting that we look at social organizational matters as a uh, something which is produced and reproduced. So we are talking about a processual um, processual view. Okay? So practices only exist as far as they are produced and reproduced. Okay? So my interest is not in some entity called there is no issue of asking what are the, the boundaries of practice, where the practice starts and ends. Because I'm interested in the reproductions of activity collected in time and space. That's what I call practices. The second thing, the word mediated, uh, means that all practices are carried through and made possible uh, by material and discursive resources. So every time we, do, we, we practice anything, we use material and discursive resources that we bring from somewhere else. So to practice is always to use resources built somewhere else. And uh, as I said, so mediation of tools also includes discourses. And both discourses and material brings things from other places and other times in the things I do here and now. So the reasons why I'm saying um, I want to call it um, practices, organized set of says and doings, is because when we look at practices, the way in which says and doings are organized differentiate one practice from another. Okay? So, so um, very often the same type of uh, um, body emotions, the same type of speech goes into different practices. Okay? We're not interested at the words itself, we're not interested at the body emotions, we're interested at the 
higher level of, of abstractions, which is the place that, where all these things get meaning. For those of you, and there are some people here who are familiar with the activity theory, that's the activity is the level where things are, are, are acquire meaning. So when you write something, it makes a difference to are you using writing as in writing in the practice of writing a menacing or a threatening letter or writing a check. It's still writing, but the unit of analysis is blackmailing and banking. Okay? And uh, finally, to say that practice has uh, a history of social constituency means, first of all, that all practices, in order to become such, they have to have a duration time. So time is inherent in the study of practice. Practice exists only as much as long as they are reproduced. So they are produced every time for the first time, but they are reproduced in history. Okay? So, what I'm thinking is, how can we rethink the world in terms of durable regime of activities? Durable regimes of activities. Well, the word regimes, of course, bring up to the fore also the, the political issues. Regimes come up, are suspended, and then disappear. And um, practices as mediated performance also always have a social constitution. So practices are also necessarily practices for someone. Okay? Social groups who legitimize or decide what practice is right or wrong, but also social groups who keep on performing the practice. And when the practice, when the social groups stops reproducing the practices, the, um, so the regime of activity stops and the practice disappears. Okay? So, so, when I'm talking about uh, or, or the project behind what I see is a practice-based approach, is the attempt of imagining social and uh, organizational matters as made up of this conglomerate of mediated performance, made of, of the same influence. They have a history, they have a constituency, they are always mediated so that they are connected in time and space by the fact that we use resources that are always kind of somewhere else. And the resources of the, the outcome of the practice are very likely to become the resources of other practices. And you can see here, this thing is becoming very quickly a rhizomatic um, uh, game. Okay? So, um, I think that in order to clarify a little further what I'm talking about practice, we can um, look together at um, the study of bureaucracy produced by a Argentinian sociologist okay, who doesn't know he's doing practice-based theory but um, that all the time. So in order to just to give you an idea of so what are we going to uh, how does study of social practices as we've seen um, I suggest you. So we can look at two short documentaries of two studies of practice. Um, is, is, uh, what is more seriously Artists are very often better than we are in redescribing practices and capturing things. Uh, they do this in a non theoretical way. So I myself always wonder sometimes. I try, I hope, I do a lot of field work. I spend two years looking at people working, and then I stumble into the description for a novelist and written about the same work. And I uh, usually just go in despair. Okay? And the reason is that. I understand whether he does or she does how the works work, but when it comes to writing it down, there is no contest. Okay? So ethnography as a do is, is understanding and then the more false part, the writing. So we'll go this. Uh, okay. If it works, it doesn't work. So how does bureaucracy look when we practice the
credits. So, this is what a good uh, study of bureaucracy from a practice based perspective would look like. So, you have seen one of the building blocks of at least Southern Europe bureaucracy for me, there was Ireland, right? Just cute. So, when I'm, when I'm talking about a project that sort of aims at reconfiguring social issues as the daily performance with the history, so I'm talking about looking at bureaucracy as a connected assemblage of this type of scene of events. Okay? So, what happens if you start to look at bureaucracy or to look at organizations or to look at uh, through this lens right? so with the example of the um, cure point? But the first time is that you start to describe the world as an accomplishment. Okay? So bureaucracy organizations are made or remade through things like what you see. Okay? This is the object, this is when you start your investigations. So, Board's activity becomes a central aspect of the analysis. It also becomes a place where you start your investigation. You start the investigation with, with work, not someone doing the work, with the work itself. And this is important because, of course, the work can be done not only by people, but also by other entities. And by other entities produce work. Okay? They don't have to have intentionality, they don't have to have wills, but they produce work. Nobody will ever discuss that the car produces some, is performative, performs some, some work in society. Okay? The second thing is that um, I start to see that uh, practice is already sociality. Okay? Practice, uh, practice as a regime of activity is oriented in orientation to what happens. So, sociality, uh, divisions of labor, what we could. Like, Many of the aspects that we call social organizations are already performed by practice. That practice performed very clearly the divisions of labor between those who have power and those who don't have power. Okay? It positions people in places, and very often it positions places people in different places. The practice of teaching positions clearly people in uh, positions of those who have the truth and those who have to absorb the truth. The practice of giving a seminar, okay? produces the speaker and listeners and it uh, performs a variety of expectations that goes with it. So the organization of this group is very much rooted in the fact that you can hear but having learned somewhere else the practice of going to a seminar. Nobody is not sitting in the room. Um, yes. In fact, <laughs> what I mentioned is we did an experiment one time at one of the RKC where we actually disrupted this thing to show us uh, many of you, some of you may have heard of it. Yes. Okay. And uh, the thing is, they don't realize that, so what the performance was basically where we, we took the practice of conference and then we transitioned to the practice of doing a party. And we filled the faces of people where these two frames started to shift, which was hilarious. So basically, <laughs> and, and you, would, you would see that people were holding on to this even when there were uh, donkey, uh, uh, there was sheep in the rooms and people were, sort of, people were still trying to understand what the person speaking was still saying. So. <laughs> I'll say this because this, the performance started with screens going up and down, which is something I didn't invent before, so I heard some of them who thought that we were going to do our performance, which we did. Okay? The third thing, so we're talking about, so what happened if you look at organizational practice from this perspective. Okay. The third thing that pops up is that you start to see the centrality of body and material things in all social affairs. So practice is carried around by disciplined bodies and is performed thank you to the world performed by a variety of objects. We can go back there and you will see that if you take a lot of the props away, that performance is impossible. Okay. Bureaucracy is a stage game organization of stage games. Take the um, um, the body and the materials away and you start to start to have 
a serious problem to understand what's going on. And finally, looking at the world from the past perspective brings you forward to the temporal dimensions. I don't think I have to elaborate. I mean, the, uh, the clip is about the, the time. And, but it's also um, um, the clip is also um, a, a, an interesting um, explanation of what we need for context. And this is something that um, the methodologist uh, has explained uh, um, extensively. The idea of context is not such imaginary background that we call the lab. The context is the fact that every situation is self, uh, the, 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 let's put it simply, the things that happens before set the scene for what happens after. The world evolves on the basis of um, the uh, sequence in which the, the term of talking or of acting before set the scene for after. Okay? So time is fundamental because how time uh, flows and uh, determines or influences what happens after what people do. And if you think about the mouse, the mouse is trying to, to move back and forth in time, making mistakes. Of time. So, and the final thing is that um, looking at practices from this perspective attracts attention that um, Practice is always moved by practical concerns. Right? And so that understanding what are the practical concerns that each practice cares with it is fundamental for understanding how things stick together. And again, this is another of the lessons of activity theory. This is very important because every practice has in its own uh, um, has the this tells, this rationality built in. And that means may be different from the motivations of the different people. We don't know what the motivations of the people in that room were. But we are now that they were, their goal, the goal of the practice of curing, is arriving at the top of the queue. Okay? So practice itself carries certain tellers, which may be different from the motivations. So once you start to work to, to the work of once you start to look at the world through the work, through the, sorry, through the height of practice that you study, and you are set, to, or you make an effort to start thinking as the practice is the unit of analysis, these are the kind of things that you start to see, or at least that you can see. So this is the focus. There are new things that pop in. Okay? Um, just another short clip. Remember, I'm trying to suggest what are the things that come to so, um, what are the things that start to become visible once you start to use practices as the unit of analysis for examining organization of essential practice. And this is what I'm trying to convince you that taking this route uh, gives some affordances because it brings to the four things that other approaches simply didn't practice. So, we've seen some of the things, the second slide, so, uh, the, the, the second clip, uh, second piece of ethnography here, okay, suggested that uh, there are three other things that comes out of the very end. Okay. So, for example, the more we look at practice, one of the things that pop out is that practice unfolds in the dimensions of accountability. I think we have some of the papers here. So how people account for this uh, is one of the things that are fundamental. Um, and this is important because one of the things that practice, one of the points of practice here is that to explain morality in a different way. Okay? To see morality is not as something that is ruled by this imaginary principles that fool us like a cloud on top of us and so make us go in some ways or another. Um, 
practice uh, gives in itself a sense of right or wrong. So uh, looking at the world through the angle of practice, it starts to ask also help us try to see um, resolving morality issues. Okay? When you learn a practice, you learn the right or wrong way of doing the practice, the right or wrong way of doing a cue. Okay? This may be acceptable or be discussed. And it's continuous in evolution. But so practice is actually an antidote to relativism. Practice is not relativism. It's actually, as we call it, is a way of doing post-realist research where you say that I mean, we know that there is one way in them to do cues. Okay? The question is, how is this cue made? How do we got here? Okay? Not whether it's right or wrong. Okay? And um, as I said, the final thing is that uh, when you look at the, uh, the world where the practice is, you start to understand that people are put in places by practices. People refer to this, and I don't really, I don't train in identity, but I suppose this is what people say when they say that people have multiple identities and multiple identities positioned them in, in different parts of the world. So we can have a discussion, hopefully, about identity later on. I come from a place where people, like that, I come from Trieste. Which, as you know, was the uh, the other home of Jane Joyce. Okay, so they come from a place where people don't have to have identity to live. So, but the idea is the principle here is that um, in order to understand how people are distributed unequally in the world, okay, look no further than the practice that are involved. And when you switch from practice to another, the position changes. So, I think I've rambled enough, but. Fundamentally, okay, what did you give an idea of what happens up? Fine. Okay. I am interested in taking up this proposition. Let's look at the world through practice lens. So, what are the things that are start to become visible? Okay. And what I've just gone through in a very quick, probably confused way, is some of the importance. Some of the things that a practice-based approach when you take practice, as I suggested at the beginning, makes you see. So it's a number of things that start to become clearer. Okay? A number of the issues that pops up. A number of, uh, overall, okay, what you end up, if you pursue this, if you study bureaucracy not as a structural things, not something based on rules, but as a tessellation of seen of events like we've seen before. So bureaucracy is and um, processing papers and doing meetings, okay, all connected together. That's what bureaucracy is about. First of all, you end up with a processual uh, ontology. So an ontology is everything is made and remade. Um, as I said, one minute ago, it's a post-realist because um, it's, a, it's an ontology where things are the way they are. They're very solid. They would not ever step in front of any train by any means. Okay? So the train is very real. The question is, why is this train going through this place and not another? I, I just was in Los Angeles last week. And in Los Angeles, you don't have problems stepping in front of trains because the car companies in the 1940s lobby furiously with the city planners in order to take the, plane, the, the trains away uh, with the excuse that a wider road would be safer. Okay? So now you see that, okay? so now you, see that uh, you can explain reality very solid but in a processual way. This is what the practice studies try to do. The second thing, as I said, is an ontology which is highly performative. And this, I think, is something that people who study um, information systems who are always at risk of very fine things we find useful as a useful environment. Okay? Um, the world is continuously made and remade. It's based on work performed by a variety of entities. But if the work stops, even the most uh, perceivably stable and resilient things can collapse. Some of us in this room have enough white hair, some of us okay, to remember things like Pan Am. I was on the plane the other day and they were celebrating women, uh, the, the uh, hostesses who were with Pan Am. When I was a kid, I went to America, 
Palam was an institution. Palam was considered a piece of America, away from America. If you go to the Palam play, you are actually safe. You can escape Iran, you can escape Russia. Okay? Many of you would even know what Palam is. The Soviet Union, okay? and we were brought up. So when the work for keeping Soviet Union going stopped, Soviet Union collapsed. Okay? So that applies to everything in the world. It doesn't make the world less solid. The third thing is the practice based approach right, uh, joins forces with other international approaches. You will find that the things I said resonate with those of you who have to play, for example, with actor vector theory. Although, I have to say, actor vector theory is not a practice based approach because the tour has said very clearly that he's not interested in taking practices as they used in order to do the job analysis. Uh, he's interested in relationship with the analysis. So it's, it's the same family. This relational approach, the unit of analysis difference, affordances are different. Okay? Some give, some take. So, relationals, what I'm trying to conjure here is the idea of, as I said, information systems, organization, self society as a connected sort of uh, just an intricate interconnection of things. There are no levels, uh, micro and macro is not really useful as a distinction, because hopes obscures the connections between how that these resources, this mutual are integrated. And finally, um, taking a practice based approach uh, suggests that the world is always situated. Okay? Situated in time, place, but also in history. Now doing three historical studies means that things are the way they are and there are no differences. It tells the political question. Who is gained from them. So doing practice-based studies, taking this, this practice-based approach, as I said, I'm not claiming that this approach is unique in this, okay? In fact, I think it's just a, a one of additions to other things. It's, um, it's basically um, thinking that practice always are practices in a particular historical context. So studying practice or studying the word practice is not only looking at the performance itself. Looking at the performances, looking at its state of doings, the materiality, uh, looking at the accountability, looking at how people produce the cue, looking at the little cue there, is only half job done. And I think this is where practice based approach started to become extremely interesting. And where practice based approach, or at least some of the things that we've done under this umbrella, and this is very much work in the making as well. It's very practice. Is, um, it's becoming different, for example, from um, um, methodology. And methodology, for some reasons that I've read, no, decided to stick only to analyze scenes of actions. Practice-based approach, being of Marxist, uh, or Marxian, I should say, inherent, asks also that question. So why are these things the way they are? And why are they different? Okay? And that's the bit that um, and the methodology refuses to do. So, zooming in the practices, understanding how such a practice of producer and producers have to apply. The other half to apply is asking how we got here, why we didn't go somewhere else, and what is keeping the regime going. So, you see now we're going back straight into politics. Okay? I don't want to just keep on going on and on. What I'm saying is that we want to do a good and interesting. There's a second move. So this approach has two moves. Zooming in and zooming out, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is my, little, my brain name. Um, which would then require the chapter at the end to explain what doesn't work with the metaphor. Okay. So the idea is that the second part of the, the act of, of the job is to ask, to scan the opinion of the world. Start to ask, as I said, what is keeping the world in place? Where are these factors reproduced? How are the things that we draw now here um, um, made to work the way they are? Where are these practices reproduced? Okay? Sometimes the practices that we're doing out here are connected very much to other places. So the idea is to expand the analytical uh, 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 horizon. And 
this can be done basically following, yes, this is uh, uh, tools, I think one, of the, one of the great natural situations, by following trails. Okay? The other thing to do this is by just doing mobile research, following the pathways. Okay? Um, and uh, these are some suggestions of how it can be done. So the question is, following the cycle of the productions and productions, wherever they take you in history, how do we got here? And in space and time, where are classes reproduced? Okay. Classes in the university are reproduced in places like the ministry, like the dealership, um, like conferences of educationalists, okay. um, in the accountants, or in your one of the one of the places where uh, practices are uh, the practice of of this way of doing classes are introduced, for example, are your estate offices. Um, try to go to uh, your estate, estate, right? The people who maintain the buildings, the people who design the buildings, so architects. Architects have ingrained the idea that the practice of teaching is people listening and one person in the middle of the room speaking and they will always go to the desk in this way. Okay. So, the practice of teaching is not produced and reproduced by the teacher sitting in the middle of the room. The, the person in the middle of the room, at 9 o'clock in the morning, is the, the tip of an iceberg, is the arrival point of a variety of cycle reproductions. If you want to understand what's going on in that performance, you have to start following back in time and space. Okay. And if you want to change that performance, you will also have to do the same. You will have to start understanding where are the critical places where the species places are produced. Um, here are some resources for zooming out. First, you can follow in the habituated bodies, the tool, and the discourses. Right? The people who are doing the queue have learned to queue at some point in time. They come on the scene when they're queuing already within the body. If you, there are English people here, apologies. I was told that English people that they feel pain in their body if they step in front of someone else in the queue of the bus, even if they are two people. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah. so, it's not true if you come from Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> Liverpoolians do not queue. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, if you come from, from another part where you're you know, um, you just, you, and you learn after living in England for 10 years, you start to feel your body, your, 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 your body are resisting you jumping in front of the person. So, try to get your word. Second thing is, um, in order to make sense of how we got here, is consider different temporalities. This is one of the very interesting things again. Um, shifting temporality makes a lot of things appear in research. Okay? If you take temporality of minutes and you look at the reproduction of minutes, like the as the methodologist, some of you have uh, encountered conversational analysis. Conversational analysis trained in settlements. Okay? Usually it's uh, uh, pragmatist journals don't accept sections of transcript more than two minutes. Usually it's 30, 35 seconds. What happens if you, anytime you, you change the horizons of temporality, you start to see different things. So you, you can look at the practice as, um, in terms of seconds, how do I speak, how do I perform um, um, authority in 30 seconds. But then you can look at one hour, the practice of the lessons over one hour, so you can start with the interactions. And then you can start to expand the temporal horizon. You start looking in terms of weeks. Most of the jobs, for example, have a yearly um, um, period. Uh, we're looking at, with, at the moment we are doing some ethnography of, um, of chief executives, and we have made a point that if you stay less than a month, we don't understand because every month they have a board meeting. Okay, their work starts almost every month. Okay? So, and then broadening the horizons means also selectively changing the, uh, the temporal horizons, start to look how. Different practices are performed differently. One in chaos performing practices differently in different parts uh, of time. And uh, the last uh, bit is, uh, is 
that once you start to plot it up and uh, start to ask yourself what we're going in this place and not another, you can start asking yourself what are the empowerment effects that our practice has and uh, how, it, how it distributes positions unequally. And one of the contradictions that every practice, every practice has embedded in itself contradictions because there is always more than one way of caring about a practice. Okay. And how this practice and contradiction play out. As I said, this is what activity theory has done quite well. So, so just to summarize, okay, what are critical questions when you start to look at the world from this perspective? So, okay. How are practices joined together? How they form assemblages? What important effects do they produce? How they travel space and time and other reproduce? Now the question that I want to leave you is So this is a challenging and provocative way of looking at social and organizational issues. Ask it, you know, start to untangle organizational matters as a assemblages of practices which have a history and constituency that are not together. Asking them what keep them together, who put them together, what is the design and what is the power of uh, projects, a power project involved in designing one particular organization is one way to know. So that's, is a, I'm trying to suggest, opens a variety of opportunities for doing research differently, for seeing different things when you study things like Iran. The question behind me is, can we see of any use of organizational scholars? Is there any value or is there any promise looking at information systems in terms of bundles of social material practices. So I think the question is open. I don't have answer. This is our question. This are, I try to just from an outside perspective ask, try to ask myself <coughs> what sort of question looking at information systems from this perspective would be generated. These are not the answer, just questions. And you can do that themselves. Um, the only one that I want, want to, to, to point out, uh, to, to conclude, is that uh, one of the interesting things that the practice phase of our staff that look at the world of practice is, is that what counts as material okay, uh, is always internal to the practice. So I think that uh, the one thing that I think practice based approach could help the commercial system is get away, I'm saying this because I, I know this is some of the people that are the top of getting away with this um, wondering about the, the installed base. So when he, what are things material in the information system, which I think is one of the questions that are plaguing most and the virtual and the virtual. For the practice based approach, material is anything that has a consequence. This is that. So what has a consequence? Okay, um, depends on the practice at hand. So one of the, the interesting things that practice-based approach produces is it changes some relation from what to where. And um, you all might have read the work of Susan Lee Starr, who was probably as moving to work as any type of person. Okay? Susan Lee Starr, one of the great virtues, one of the many virtues. Started to shift, to shift the questions, and when looking the world from a strongly performative way, she was looking uh, without using the word "back." But she started to substitute the questions "what" for the question "when." Okay. So the question is: looking at the information system as part of practices, the question is: when is the social material arrangement in these strong times when it's not? Okay. Not what it is. And then you start to change questions from what to when, a lot of things happen in your